ours. <clears throat> How can I differentiate between my own thoughts, desire, emotions from God's will, desire, purpose for my life? or how to be led by the Spirit, to be sensitive to God's leading. <clears throat> you know, I often use this example. I find that my mind thinks in illustrations and that, uh, that makes it something clear to me. And I think Jesus also used that very often like salt and light and all. So I say it's something like recognizing your mother's voice if she's in the other side of the wall with number other other ladies there speaking you can pick out your mother's voice and the reason is because you've heard it so often now if I've heard your mother speak three or four times I wouldn't be able to speak uh, pick out her voice I mean if, even if I hear her for a week I may not be able to pick out her voice so it's familiarity with a voice that enables us to pick out a voice it's the same with God's voice there are many voices that are in our mind and heart, our own most of all, opinions that <clears throat> we have absorbed through radio, television, billboards, newspapers, media, a lot of them wrong. Those are voices too, how you should spend your money and how you should do this, etc. And uh, the opinions of many other people that we have absorbed through the years from childhood, there are many voices in our hearts and in the midst of it all to hear God's voice means we must become familiar with it and that takes time so Jesus said the sheep hear his voice but the lambs the little ones have to learn it then one day they'll hear it and to begin with the best way to know God's voice is to read the Bible because that's definitely God's voice and the only way I can prove it to you is I've read it for 50 years and I know it's God's voice and uh, if you have a doubt about that I would say read it and ask God to speak to you through it to solve your problems through it I personally believe after 50 years of experience that there is an answer in scripture to every problem that any human being can ever face without exception. There is an answer here if you know where to find it. Uh, in a principle, it's not a specific word like you must marry this person or you must take this job or you move to this place. No, but a principle that the Lord will give you through some part of the word which will guide you in your decision. Um, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit did not dwell inside anyone. He was God was outside man and he spoke from outside so you could hear with these years Abraham and Isaac and every, uh, Isaiah and all these people heard God from the outside but in the New Testament the Holy Spirit has come to live inside us and that's why we hear God's voice inside you would think that hearing him on the outside is better but it is not we can say that uh, if God has to direct us concerning every little thing we will not grow spiritually <clears throat> one of the things I've discovered in my life is that in the early years of my Christian life I would hear God more clearly you know in scripture and other ways by which even little things I would know what God wanted me to do but as I've grown older in the Lord I don't hear that voice so clearly. It's almost as though God leaves it up to me to take a decision. And the example is this. The younger and smaller your child is, the more you have to tell it. Brush your teeth, change your clothes, have a shower, go to bed, do your homework. But as they grow older or eat up your vegetables or whatever it is, and as they grow up you have to tell them less and less and less and less. And you know that when a child is 25 years old, you don't tell him to brush his teeth or go have a shower or any such thing. So as we grow spiritually, if you're always waiting for the Lord to tell you to brush your teeth and do this and do that, you're still a child. You should be growing up where many things you, you know, you picked up good habits in your life that you don't need God to tell you that you shouldn't be watching that TV program. 
how many times do you want God to tell you that? <laughs> or you shouldn't be doing that. Or that's not the way to speak to your wife. Or that's not the way to speak to your husband. Over a period of time, you don't need God to tell you that. You've, you've understood it yourself. And that's what it means when it says in Romans 12 verse 2, Be not conformed to this world in your mind, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means, you, to renew your mind means through reading God's word, I've begun to think like God thinks. And then the rest of the verses, so that you may know what the perfect will of God is. See, that's the question. How can I know what is God's perfect will? Here's the answer. Allow your mind to be renewed. Uh, for example, <clears throat> today if someone were to ask my wife many questions about me, she could answer me what type of um, food I like or what type of, uh, what my answer would be to a particular situation, what I would do if I were in the house, if this happened. But the first year she got married to me, she wouldn't have known all the answers to those things. So it's like that in marriage. The more you live together, you get to know your husband, what are his interests, what are his ways of life, what are his likes and dislikes. It's like that. The more we live with God, we know what are his likes and dislikes. It's exactly, we are supposed to be the bride of Christ. And as we live with our bridegroom and our in Romans 7 4 says we are married to him in our spirit we are joined to the Lord in one spirit we get to know him more and more just like in a marriage as the years go by if you really walk with the Lord if you really are in fellowship with your husband only then will you come to know him if you just occasionally meet your husband you won't know him but if you are regularly living with Jesus you will gradually acquire his mind that just like if somebody were to come to my home today and um, I'm not there and he asks my wife about something, what do you think Zach would do in this situation? She could tell him straight away. So we will also know like that, this is what Jesus would do here and this is what I'm supposed to do, but it takes time. And we have to be honest there. You know, the more we are seeking the glory of God, you know, if our motive is, Lord, I want to seek your glory, God begins to show us what his will is. And that's what it means to be led by the Holy Spirit also. That the Holy Spirit prompts us. And I would say, in addition to reading God's word, we have to be careful to listen to the voice of conscience. The voice of conscience is the very first step to hearing God. Because conscience is uh, in its unadulterated state in a little baby. It's really the voice of God. But it gets corrupted through the years as we grow up where maybe our parents said, ah, oh, that's okay, a little bit of cheating is all right or something like that. <clears throat> then our conscience gets corrupt. But even then, in a faint way, we realize that certain things are wrong. And if I listen to that, God will lead me on and on and on and on to try to discover more and more things are wrong. But if I don't obey what the Lord shows me, then He will not lead me further.